Hello everyone, I'm Danny Steven from MakeUsif.com, and today we'll be taking a look at this Lenovo IdeaPad N20P Chromebook. Now, when you think of Lenovo, you might think of their very well-built laptops such as the ThinkPad series or just about any other laptop that they've made. Uh, they're very awesome. Uh, everyone seems to like them. They are a bit pricey though. And then when you think about Chromebooks, you think about pretty cheap hardware that might not be very ideal, but it's good enough to get the job done at a very, very affordable price. So then what happens when you put the two together? Is it a very cheap machine? Is it crappy? Or is it actually a very good fusion of those two ideas? Let's find out. So first off, let's take a look at the design of this Chromebook. I really do like the design. The exterior has a very simple silver finish. Uh, the inside also has a very simple black finish. It's clean, crisp, it looks great. Uh, so no complaints right there. Uh, you might have noticed though that there are some rubber feet all around here that are pretty or in pretty unconventional places. And this is because this Chromebook has one of the famous uh, Lenovo features called stand mode. And so in stand mode, you can turn the Chromebook uh, into this position right here, and it will completely disable the keyboard and mouse and leave you with just the touchscreen. Now this is great for some productivity uses, such as uh, taking notes for example, but this is probably best for when you're consuming media, because then you can just interact directly with that media and not have to worry about anything else. It's very simple. The also, the plus side to this is that the speakers, which are normally uh, downward facing in the normal laptop mode, can also now, or they are now also upward facing, which automatically improves the quality of the speakers just because they're facing a little bit more towards you. Of course, the screen will be blocking the way of the speakers just a little bit, but it is a, an improvement nonetheless. Now you can also take the Chromebook and place it like this. Um, this is, um, I don't know if it's officially or unofficially called tent mode, but that's what I would call it at least. So this works just as well. You can even place the Chromebook like this if you wanted to. Now this makes me think like it could possibly act like a tablet, but this is as far as it bends. You can't completely make it flush with the backside of the keyboard, uh, so you can't actually use it like a tablet. However, if Lenovo somehow found, found a way in the future to do that, that would be simply incredible. But this alone I really just like because it's so useful. And also, like I said, this has a touch screen, it works great, the on-screen keyboard will let you type things out so you don't have to constantly uh, change the angle of the Chromebook just to be able to use the uh, keyboard. Now let's close the Chromebook again and we will take a look at the ports really quickly. So here on the right side, we have a USB 2.0 port, uh, the power button, a battery indicator, and then an SD card reader. And here on the left side, we have the power port, a USB 3.0 port, a mini HDMI port, and a combination headphone and microphone jack. So, so far on the design, this Chromebook does very, very well. Like I mentioned earlier, one of the things that I absolutely love about this Chromebook, besides the stand mode, is the touchscreen. Because it's a very, very good touchscreen. I, I definitely enjoyed using it. It was part of why I probably liked using stand mode so much as well. But it, it just knows exactly where you want to touch, and it doesn't take much to get it to recognize that you are touching it. So it it just works really well. Um, there's not a whole lot here, obviously, to touch to show that off, but it it just works great. I had absolutely no problems with it whatsoever. Now, moving down to the keyboard and touchpad. All I can say about the keyboard is, wow. Honestly, I haven't ever owned a Lenovo device before, but I've heard so many great things about its keyboard, and once I started using the keyboard, I completely started to understand. And this might not even be the best keyboard that they've ever made, well obviously, uh, because it's a Chromebook. Um, I'm sure they put even better keyboards in their ThinkPads and the like. So just touching, or excuse me, typing on this keyboard was 
amazing. I really enjoyed it, everything was right, the spacing in between them, the feel of the keys, the, the key press travel distance, all of it was just fantastic. Uh, now the only thing that I could complain about the keyboard, which isn't necessarily complain about the keyboard itself, but probably more a build quality issue, is when, when I push down over here, nothing happens, right? You can see that, you know, everything's fine and sturdy, but when I push down here, you can kind of see that some of the keys, you know, surrounding like this general area, they kind of depress with it. And I'm not even like pushing on the keys right now, I'm pushing in between the keys. And you can just see that this whole area kind of here kind of just goes down with it. Now, this issue is mostly a visual one because whenever I was typing, I really couldn't feel a difference between the left side and the right side. Uh, it was more just a visual difference. So um, I could only see the issue when I was looking at it while typing, and that was the only time it ever bothered me. Uh, so whenever I wasn't paying attention to that, I had no problems with the keyboard whatsoever. Uh, the trackpad is also pretty good. It's not the greatest, um, but it does have a pretty nice feel to it. It's pretty accurate, so no complaints really. Um, the only issue I personally had is sometimes I like to use my middle finger while moving the keyboard, or excuse me, the uh, mouse cursor around. And um, when I tested it earlier, um, it did have uh, some issues with that finger, as in that the finger kept on bouncing around on the touchpad. Uh, this is a different day, so maybe I've done something else with my finger, so it's not doing that now. Um, but on my index finger, I had no problem whatsoever. And I'm pretty sure that that's what most people will be using uh, for their touchpad anyways. So there you have it. This Lenovo IdeaPad and 20 p Chromebook gets two really big thumbs up for me just because although it is a bit pricey for a Chromebook, it's still pretty reasonably priced at approximately $330 without any discounts. However, it has excellent build quality it has lots of features, and I absolutely love the stand mode right here. This will just do wonders, and especially help with media, especially since then the speakers suddenly are uh, upward facing. But I, I think this is probably one of my favorite Chromebooks so far. It definitely rivals the Samsung Chromebook 2. Might even surpass it just by a little bit. I can't say for sure because the Samsung Chromebook 2, I only reviewed the 13 inch version and not the 11.6 inch version. However, if you don't mind an 11.6 inch Chromebook, which on this one I really didn't, the uh, screen felt bigger than I thought it was going to be, and it was just a joy to use, so get it, definitely get it. Uh, for the full review, please head over to makeusef.com and don't forget to enter the giveaway so that you can win this awesome Chromebook. Thanks for watching.